This is Kat Kerr on the right. If you're unfamiliar, she's a televangelist, a um, an evangelical. She believes that Trump is a messiah, and he was prophesied to take control of the United States and spark Armageddon and everything else. It's crazy stuff, dude. Anyways, she has some really interesting prophecies, honestly, that I wanted to talk about. Apparently, she has a prophecy, quote unquote, about Star Wars. No joke. Star Wars. OK, now, if you're unfamiliar with this person, Kat Kerr, let me give you just a, a, a taste of who this who she is. And then we're going to hit the Star Wars bit. If you're terminally online like me, then you'll recognize her probably from this video came out in 2019, late August 2019. So right now at this moment, we take authority over Dorian that has no right off the coast of this state or anywhere. And we hit that storm to the east right now. And I'm going to do it three times. We hit it to the east. We hit it to the east and command it. You go to the east, out away from land. We declare you would do no destruction in any way. We won't tolerate it. So, Father, I thank you for this honor. I privilege to be here on the little coast of Florida. So, anyway, yeah, that's Kat Kerr. If you're unfamiliar, that's who she is. She believes she's got a little stick here, a little staff. She believes that she's kind of like Moses, really. And that's why she carries a staff. She believes that Moses pointed his staff at the Red Sea and commanded it to part. And in the same way, she can point her little stick places and make things happen, too, just like Moses, because she's a prophet. So anyway, she has a prophecy for us about Star Wars. There's also a video of her all the way back from 2009 when she really started coming on the scene originally. I wanted to watch that one, too. It's, God, dude, they're all unhinged from reality, seriously. Here it is, yeah. Kat Kerr Describes Heaven is the name of the the other one that I wanted to watch. And, yeah, see, revealingheaven.com oh god it's just so cringy this one is on her website so she still stands behind all of this that she said you know what this video is like six minutes the revealing heaven one from 2008 uh april 2008 let's just listen to a little bit of it so we get an idea of what she believes and while we do we're going to play some breath of the wild i'm just going around uh farming stuff breath of the wild too this is cat kerr of revealing heaven and I have to tell you about this revelation. You know what? Heaven is the most fun place you'll ever live in your life. Did you ever think of that? Most people, and including the world, think heaven is going to be so boring. They don't even want to go there. Most believers actually say, what in the world am I going to do for eternity? What is it going to do up there besides bowing to God and maybe singing some songs with the choirs in heaven, sitting on a cloud with a harp? Guess what? You don't get a harp when you go to heaven unless you already play one. You know, maybe if you want one to decorate your mansion, he might give you one. But what are you going to do with it anyway? Uh, the reason my hair is pink, by the way, I forget that a lot. God himself asked me to have pink hair. For the, for the reason that you will know heaven is going to be a whole lot more different than we thought it was. God, she's so cringy, dude. It, here's the interesting thing about it. it. It's like the way that everybody thinks heaven is going to be is how they would like it to be. It's not like the way that may, makes the most sense or anything else. You know why? Because the Bible doesn't really describe it in enough detail to make any sense in the first place. You can't make any like assumptions about it or whatever. But here she is. She's coming in and she's going to make wild assumptions about what heaven is like and claim to know for a fact that heaven is like this because God gave her this secret information. Seriously. It's so cringy. It is painful. He takes me nonstop on tours of heaven so you can know what's really there. And the thing he asked me, the very first thing he said is, your assignment is to make heaven so real they could feel like they could live there. And they have to know it is going to be fun. 
He did tell you you had to be like a little child to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And he didn't say that because it was going to be sober and profound and serious. I think she meant somber. But is she telling us that it's gonna, there isn't going to be any sobriety there either? Is she telling us that everyone's going to be drunk 24-7? Boy, that would be an interesting prophecy, wouldn't it? He said that because you will act and feel like a little kid. I see people getting out of transports and chariots and just running in circles, yelling and laughing. They're so excited because it's so much more amazing than they thought it would be. You'll see people celebrating, dancing in the streets, uh, just grabbing everybody and hugging them. And you have parties everywhere in heaven. Heaven created parties, okay? We didn't make them on this earth. They did. They so anyway, God, she's, it's, it's so cringy. It's painful. Seriously. How does somebody seriously believe this stuff? How does one get to the point where they buy any of this? It's ridiculous. Celebrate over everything. And so there is a lot of fun in the house. And I say house because you know what the word says. In my father's house are many mansions. And people have this idea of a lot of rooms crammed inside of a big building. Forget that. His house would be the world called heaven. How big is it? So big that they have angels in heaven bigger than our planet. So let me take you out of your box today and share some of the fun places he's shown me in heaven. Yes, they have movie theaters in heaven. They invented it. We didn't. They have fantastic, exciting, intense, uh, hilarious movies in heaven. If you ever wanted to be, you get to be. You go in the one door of the theater and sit and watch the movie, or you go down the hall in another door, and you literally step into the movie. You're in the movie. She is so bizarre. Dude. You, you're in the movie. Now you get to be like one of the actors in the movie. Acting. So how about that? That's a whole lot better than down here on this earth, isn't it? A lot of fun, exciting movies that are shown on the earth actually make it to heaven, but they do have some certain criteria you have to meet. You never see anything defiling, disgusting, vile, no sexual content, no profanity, no crude humor. Isn't that wonderful? Just think. No, it sounds miserable. I love that stuff. That, that's like the best part of a movie. All the crude humor and everything. Are you kidding me? No more crude humor? Anyone can go see the movies in heaven. I think they need to get... And no profanity? I'm really... Yeah, this is not my heaven. I, I don't know about you, Cat Kerr, but this, this isn't my heaven. Maybe your heaven. Clue on this earth, okay? If they want it shown in heaven, they better straighten out a little bit of those things. But I can tell you, they have amazing movies in heaven. They have an amusement park in heaven where you can ride on carousels where the animals are alive. They don't have a post to them. They have a, like a little platform that goes up and down. Your kids get to ride on elephants and porpoises and baby dinosaurs and unicorns. The God, it's so ridiculous. It's painful. Like, honestly, how do people buy this? How does anybody believe this? How did she convince anybody of any of this stuff? Seriously. Blows me away. Real thing, okay? You think that you want to know what your kids are doing in heaven if they're there? They're riding the carousels in heaven. They're eating the cotton candy and the candied apples and popcorn and pies. And yeah, they do get some other stuff too. But you know what? Uh, it doesn't matter if you have a sweet tooth in heaven. Heaven was made for you. There's no food allergies, no weight gain. Uh, your children, if they're children, they get hoverboards. They go together in groups all over heaven, even around the age of five. They can't get... Hoverboards, she said. They get hoverboards. Ooh. That sounds exciting, right? Anybody excited for the hoverboards? Oh, so they're not going to get hurt. There's so many exciting things for them to do. They even have a place called Cartoon Village, and you can just guess what happens there. You get to create your own cartoon, and then you're in the cartoon as a cartoon. So stupid, dude. So anyway, yeah, that's Cat Kerr, if you were unfamiliar. Yeah, we'll, we'll finish watching. That was my outro. I'll just cut that part. It's just ridiculous, honestly. And people buy this. Isn't that fun? Just think, I think every kid living in heaven has probably experienced that. You say, how can that possibly be? Because it's not earth, all right? We're natural people here. In heaven, you're a supernatural, eternal being, and you do supernatural things. They have a, a place called Christmas Town in heaven. I've mentioned it before. You, you like snowball fights and skiing and ice skating? You go to Christmas Town. When you go into a new place in heaven, there's buildings. You walk through those buildings, put on the, the outfit you need to enjoy that part 
everything fits you. There's no 10 different sizes. It just conforms to your being. You go on uh, sleigh rides, have hot cocoa, uh, have huge snowball fights. You enjoy that part of heaven. God wanted it to be fun so you can enjoy your life. No one is resting in heaven. They need to, they need to wipe RIP off the tombstones and they need to say, No one is resting in heaven. Enjoying the party or riding the rush. You know, people believe this stuff. You know why they believe this? Because they're desperate to not face reality. They're desperate to convince themselves even harder that this is true, that she has some special insight that she simply doesn't have, and that everything that she's saying is informed by God, that she really was sent here by God to send everybody a message. It's sad, honestly. It's sad that people buy this stuff, you know? Or, or that's what they're doing in heaven. You know, that's the reality of being in heaven. There's uh, places in heaven where you can go. It's like the Amazon jungle or the rainforest, and all the animals in those places will actually talk to you. Nothing's going to harm you. Every, they'll talk to you. A apparently, they speak English, okay? You can, uh, you can go to sports in, he in heaven and have fun doing that. All the sports in heaven are played as worship. There's three scoreboards, not two, and Jesus gets all the points, so there's even more competition in heaven. Three scoreboards, not two. And the third one is for Jesus. And nobody gets any of the points except for Jesus. So why are there even three scoreboards in that case? Why don't they just do two scoreboards? Or why don't they just do one scoreboard? And every time somebody gets a score, it counts it up on the single scoreboard for Jesus. Like none of this makes any sense at all. But you know what? You can hit that ball a lot further in heaven than you can on this earth. So a lot of people, you're going to enjoy your life in heaven. You'll have more fun than you ever did here with your family, with your friends. You know, God doesn't keep fun out of heaven. He made it a big part of heaven. So I hope that one day you'll make your choice to belong to God, to live in heaven for eternity, and then eventually on the new earth, which is going to be even more fun. I want you to know there is going to be fun in the house when you get to heaven. So you be blessed, and you can go to my website, revealingheaven.com, if you want to know more information, and have fun. It's good to laugh. So painful, it's stupid. So anyways, yeah, I, I'm sorry. So stupid, it's painful. So anyways, yeah, God told her to have pink hair, she says. God said, you must have pink hair, quote unquote. So that's Kat Kerr. Let's listen to her prophecy about Star Wars, okay? Now that we're aware of who this person is. Why are there two scoreboards? I think what she meant was there are two score tracking whatevers, you know, not scoreboards, but score tracking whatevers. She just didn't have the right word for it. <laughs> I'll make my own heaven with blackjack and hookers. That sounds like a plan. I'm down. How's the air in NYC? It's awful upstate. Oh, it's bad. Yesterday I was streaming and, and it was orange outside. Orange. It was bizarre looking honestly it was eerie and weird apocalyptic is the word i use to describe it so yeah anyway it's uh it's weird it's pretty thick um i mean it, it looks a little bit better right now but technically the air quality rating where i live is right now 188 apparently is that is that up to date 188 very unhealthy yeah, 188. Usually the air quality is significantly better than that. Air quality index is 188, similar to yesterday at about this time. It's supposed to get worse, too, I think. Yep, 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 it's going to get worse. There's a cloud of it coming. We just have to stay inside, wear masks and stuff as much as possible. I want to ask you about, you said movie, so the question is sort of a multiple choice. Uh, do you mean the Holy Spirit gets involved in Christian movies only or just allegorical movies? Does he get involved in Star Wars type movies? Yes. What, what kind of movies does the Holy Spirit involve himself in? Well, he is called... What kind of movies does the Holy Spirit involve himself in? What a bizarre question. Of the drama king, which means he loves excitement, he loves intensity, he, he loves beautiful things. He loves, he loves things that move the emotions of people 
in a great direction. Does he love that stuff? I mean, the Holy Spirit, I guess, what she's talking about, right? Does he love it as much as I love your mom? Never anything in the darkness. The only time he does anything, if it's a movie just bashing, <laughs> bashing darkness to pieces, where, where good always wins, good wins over evil, which is really what Star Wars is about. And I did not know this, but Jen said yesterday was Star Wars Day, when they say, may the fourth be with you. Yeah, may the fourth be with you. Uh, this came out on Star Wars Day, I guess. It's crazy. <laughs> but I myself love Star Wars and what it stood for. You know, in case anybody wondered, Stan made it to heaven, people. Um, of course, he's Marvel. He's not necessarily Star Wars. Yeah, she's talking about Stan Lee made it to heaven. Yeah, why are you talking about Stan Lee in reference to Star Wars? Completely different things. And by the way, Star Wars was about the Vietnam War originally. It was made around that time. And it was about how the Vietnam War was like destructive and damaging and wrong and how the good guys always win in the end. Like the, the little guy takes the empire, the big empire out in the end. That's what Star Wars was made to be about. And by the way, Star Wars, honestly, it was a fascinating world that, that was built a really fascinating world and a, the, honestly a big fan of the original Star Wars four five and six but it was kind of the same trope repeated over and over and over again like we've heard these same stories told a billion times you know with the hero who had no involvement in it and eventually grows up to get better at it and uh, learns how to fight the enemy and blah, blah, blah. It's all the same stuff, dude. It's the same tropes that it's, you know, that happens in just about every old book or old story, old movie or whatever. It's all the same stuff. There's nothing really unique about Star Wars except for maybe the world building. So anyways, let's keep listening here. But I just had to throw that in there for free. Um, Stan was the Marvel guy who even even to his very end was designing and creating stuff. He always, always, like Star Wars, George Lucas, who started Star Wars, always wanted to show good over evil. Awesome. Never in the movies was he for evil. And in those movies, there's almost no bad words and almost no sexuality is in, in the Star Wars movies. Right. Uh, there's like sci-fi violence, like you see robots being blown up and stuff like that. But it is for the good. I'm telling you, the movies are exciting and fantastic. Um, and, and I still appreciate watching some of them. So that's a good, decent fantasy. Awesome, man. Did you Interesting. So I, I, she's saying that she likes it because it doesn't have like any swears or anything. Is that what she's trying to communicate? I mean, I suppose. But, you know, I feel like if she knew its origins, what Star Wars was about, and the fact that, like, Star Wars would definitely... Uh, Star Wars would criticize the side that she stands for, the extremist side. I mean, the, the whole idea behind Star Wars is to criticize the extremist side. If she realized that, she most definitely would not like it anymore. Did you literally... <laughs> Did you literally say just now that the that yesterday, the fourth of May, that the Holy Spirit Himself said, "May the fourth be with with you"? Wow, Cat Kerr receives prophecy from God. The prophecy, "May the fourth be with you." Is that right? They, Did I hear you right? They they actually do say that in heaven, but they actually say that on the earth. May the fourth be with you. It's painful, dude. It's so stupid that it is painful. And I want you to know that the force in those movies was God. They actually, awesome. I, they probably she completely misunderstood the point of the movie. She lo she missed the plot entirely. Probably hit it. They probably have hidden it. But I, in the day, was here when the first one was released. I was in the sit when the, uh, it's called A New Hope of All Things, where you will look, when you meet the main characters in Star Wars. That would be Luke, you know, and um, Princess Leia and all them. 
Is that who the main characters are in Star Wars? Okay. And how hope was being brought by, guess what? A remnant of people to come against the evil in, in these fantasies. It's true. I'm sure Steve has seen it. And so um, God, I know that the hope, the new hope actually shows in heaven. And you can actually sign up to be characters in that movie. It's Heaven has movies, but they have to be decent. They have to be exciting. There can be no evil things. There's no witchcraft. Not in my heaven. No witchcraft in heaven. And the thing about Star Wars is they never had witchcraft. Okay, they did a great movie showing villains that weren't witches. That's that's a good tip right there. That's true. Um, witch- they have villains that, that were not witches. Okay. Witches are real. There are no good ones. I might as well add that for you, too. But I myself, actually, God's going to have me produce movies one day. I knew I would write them, but then the father came to me and said, I want you to get a marker and write on the palm of your hand these words. And he said, I'm writing them on my hand at the same time. This is how he does things with me. And he, he wrote, he said, right on your hand, heaven's producer. And he. Wow. She wants to be a movie producer. So she says God prophesied to her, gave her a secret message, a secret prophecy. The secret message, you get to be a movie producer when you reach heaven. It is so stupid. It's painful. I am sorry, man. He was talking about me so that's wow. how i get newest that's how i get new assignments and uh there's some of the best movies that haven't even been made yet that'll be on this earth some will be about christ some will be about the spirit realm and the truth about the spirit realm but some will be some of the best action adventure movies you've ever seen that will be decent but powerful that's without so profanity good. without sexuality without witchcraft and and they and they haven't even been made yet. But I already know people are saying God's dropping things into me like this, and people look at Hollywood. Will stop looking at it the way it is now because God's about to do something with yeah. that. You know, you don't know. Wait. So she says God's gonna like do something to like hurt Hollywood. Is that what she's saying? I think that's the uh, point here. You know this about me. I don't think I told you this, but years ago, before I kind of got attacked in my health, but. I was at an airport in Cincinnati, and, and a, a, a man who was kind of a simpleton, um, you could tell he was, he had a, the chronological age was, or his mental age was probably like five or six. Simpleton? Um, I mean, I assume what he's saying is the guy had like a, a mental condition. Is that like the point he's trying to communicate? I assume. Uh-huh. But he was an adult, he was doing the trash. And he would come along and he would tell everybody who they look like. And he'd say, you look like a plumber or you look like this. And he came up to me and he said, excuse me, sir, can I talk to you? And I, and I said, yeah. And he says, you look like an independent film producer. And I and I was taken aback. Yeah. Um, and- Changing the trash. Okay, well, maybe they shouldn't have this guy out front that he's saying things like this to people. I don't know. And then he, uh, so then he left for a while and he did more things. An hour or two went by because it was a long wait. Airport. I was in the restroom in one of the stalls. I heard him come in and begin to tell people who they look like. He never, ever, ever repeated that same thing. Yeah. And then I went back out to my same place. He came around. He didn't, re- he, he acted like he had no idea he'd ever spoken to me ever. And he said, Excuse me, sir, can I tell you who you look like? And he go, and I said, sure. He goes, you look like an independent film producer. Uh, what is the point of this story? I don't. Is he saying that he believes God sent this guy to him to like reveal this secret about him or whatever? Is that the point? What a bizarre story to tell. I, and I was stunned, and I knew it was the Lord. Yeah. And then go back back in time, like uh, two years ago, I met ACPE with the pro- uh, Prophetic Roundtable, and uh, uh, um, De Havilland is her name, first name, African American woman, and she's talking to me. I just had met her, and we were just talking. And she's interesting. He says African American woman. I I I think that she's just an American. I don't think there's any African American in the in the equation here. Uh, and you could just say black. That's probably a, a just a better way to do it. Just say black. She stopped in mid sentence. She goes, "You're going to produce Christian films," and and all of a sudden, and, you know, so she didn't say. I've had like four of those, 
So I know I, I've got the same heart that you do, that, that just because we are prophetic people doesn't mean God won't give us these other kinds of tasks. Uh, they're both prophetic, apparently. They both have secrets that God reveals to them or something. Okay, wow. Oh, which is the same word for everyone watching. Just that's because right. you're this doesn't mean you won't also be that, right? You are abs that's absolutely true, especially in these days we're in, why they're so important. Before we start getting accelerated again, people, and I encourage people, get a journal. I don't care if it's like a dollar notebook, a spiral notebook. If God has given you ideas for witty inventions or apparel, draw it. You may not know how to make it, but if God gave it to you, then you're responsible for it. Eventually, at one point, there will be places you can take that and have things made. But even movie scripts, okay, even books. And, but I know movie scripts is uh, if God could have had movies on the earth in Jesus' time, he would have used them. That's why he told parables. A parable is a movie without the screen. <laughs> a parable is a movie without the screen, okay? And so they're, they're, they're huge on movies, and he will be showing so many powerful things. Like, see, this. I feel like this is kind of blasphemous, isn't it? What she's doing here, making up a story that God told her that blah, 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 whatever. Isn't that like a little blasphemous, claiming to hear the word of God when she didn't, and just making up the most ridiculous story about it? on top of that. Is that not like super blasphemous? Does anyone else think so? In movies, right now in our own theater, there's probably one thing I'd even go and see because the rest of it's very dark. And, um, but I can promise you that is gonna be changing also. So write it down if he gave you something, especially if it has to do with the movies. And I am an avid movie goer, but I always check out what's in it before I go see it. Thinking right now of Jeff Okay, yeah, skips forward apparently. This is just a clip from his channel, from uh, the Elijah List YouTube channel, apparently. Wow. So she always researches her movies before watching them, okay. Who's the face that came on a few minutes ago when, and he loves Star Wars. So yeah. does he get to be in a Star Wars movie if he wants and he can play the part he wants or what? Well, some guy likes Star Wars, so he's asking if he can be in Star Wars when he gets to heaven. The one, the one, hi to your dog. <laughs> she, yeah. Sometimes I said, hear our cat said, meow here. I said we have Star a Wars cat. and she barked. <laughs> yeah, tell us about whether you can even have a Star Wars movie in heaven. I would have to say that does not mean every single one will be shown in heaven. Uh, right. There's sometimes a lot of people make a good first one. Then after that, I'm not saying Star right. Wars did that. Star Wars showed a lot of truth about the spirit realm. It was always. It did what? Star Wars? Showed a lot of truth about the spirit realm, you say? What the hell are you talking about? Always good against evil. Um, I think I applaud George Lucas for, I'm sure that those scripts were downloaded from heaven. Um, they were downloaded from heaven, the scripts were. It didn't come from George Lucas. He was just the vessel. Apparently, he's prophetic too, I, I, according to Kat Kerr, okay? Wow. For him to wow. make those movies. And the popularity only grew, but you knew for sure there'd no be no sexual scenes, right. almost no profanity whatsoever. And if there was like shooting and stuff, it was usually like robots or sci-fi stuff, things that I'm mm -hmm. not saying. I don't know if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure that didn't Leia call Han Solo a pretty offensive name? Uh, no good scruffy looking nerf herder, if I remember correctly. That's not very nice. That's profanity, right? Isn't that profanity? Seems to me. It's always okay to see all of it. I'm not validating everyone ever done, but right. I did see Star Wars 1 being shown in the theaters and people were playing in Luke Skywalker. Wow. They were playing Princess Leia. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that's amazing. So they, and they can play the part, I guess they can play the part. Yeah. And I'm just tell people, I don't mind saying what I saw. I yeah, hear yeah. what I saw. I say what I was told. I can't repeat other people's stuff. I can't take what they got and say this. I can't, right. but if he showed it to me, I'm allowed to tell you about it. And I did see the first Star Wars movie, wow. shown, which was always good fighting evil. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
and it's uh, mostly family oriented stuff. So I can't say every sci-fi movie was good. Every were made because some of them are darker and I don't go see them myself. Wait, so she's saying she doesn't watch all of the Star Wars movies because some of them are darker? And and I've been meaning to ask you this every time we've talked about movies in heaven over the years. Uh, if it was good fighting evil, are there parts that someone plays the evil part? I'm not talking about with profanity. Does someone play Dark Va Darth Vader? So they're 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 playing the evil character in heaven, or is it replaced with some other? If you've seen, if you even know how to answer. Well, it's in wow. So you're not allowed to like play an evil part in heaven, apparently, or nobody will ever play an evil part. So how do they portray Darth Vader in heaven without getting an actor to do it? It's so fascinating to me to watch these people completely make something up like out of thin air. This is entirely made up. And then retroactively go back and try to explain it, come up with excuses and descriptions and everything else. Honestly fascinating to watch them go through this whole bizarre process. I didn't see the whole movie. I can't okay. answer that question. Okay. Like, it's all made up. She claims she has, you know, God in her ear, like God gives her secret messages and all of that. It's not true. He doesn't. So everything that she says is fabricated right off the top of her head. And somehow people believe her. Somehow she is influential enough to help write the curriculum for Christian private schools and stuff. Somehow she has, uh, like when she does live streams, somehow she has more viewers, live viewers than me by like a factor of five like she has like 6,000 live viewers when she does live streams. That's crazy. She is crazy influential. But okay. I'm sure if they did, we all should know. You should all know Darth Vader ends up by being good before he dies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, I guess they, what, Darth Vader just isn't in the movie until he turns good. They just talk about him until he's good. And then they, you know, and then they get an actor to step in and pretend to be Darth Vader because he's good again and it's safe. Just where are these people's heads, honestly? How did they get here? Absurd. There you go. And if you, if you notice the thing that always amazed me with George Lucas was if somebody was taken out or they died in the movie, if they were a leading person, if they were good, you always saw their spirit person, like towards mm, the end of the movie, in the movie. That's interesting, and, uh, yeah. And that was- What? You, oh yeah, you, okay, I remember seeing um, the spirits, yeah. I remember that, yeah, you saw the spirits at the end of the movie because that only happens to Jedi who are particularly strong. Um, I don't know if you guys are like aware of the lore in this movie or whatever, in these movies, but um, the metachlorians keep their consciousness alive, basically, and they can communicate with others. That's not like them being spirits or, or angels or something. But she absolutely must find a way to make Star Wars a religious film. Absurd, dude. Absurd. It was actually... That was like reality, really. And that's kind of reality because your spirit person isn't dead. It's very much alive. And so that's one of the other things I liked about the movies was so much of it showed the spirit realm, spirit realm part. But you never saw an evil person reappear in the spirit probably because they were living in hell in the movie. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Just, I just think that. Right. You never saw the evil person appear in the spirit realm in Star Wars because they used the dark side of the force. If they used the light side, then they might be able to retain their consciousness like that for short bursts of time. Like, there's a whole explanation about it in the series, and the explanation is not God. God is not in these movies at all. In fact, this is very much a magical thing. Star Wars is magical. It's like a magical fantasy world that exists. She's talking poorly about Harry Potter 
and talking positively about Star Wars. Really? I don't understand how she got here. Like... Why is it that she's positive about Star Wars but not Harry Potter? Aren't they basically the same thing anyway? I mean, as as far as like fantasy goes, aren't they basically the same level? Don't they perform tricks and stuff like uh the Jedi are capable of moving things with their minds and seeing the future in some situations and uh stuff like that? They they're basically like witches, right? So apparently she's okay with science fiction witchcraft, but not fantasy witchcraft. Okay. But, but you know, in the one, it shows a lot of the destruction to the evil ones yeah. that oh, were in the one movie, evil. But the people who were good that died, you did see them standing in the spirit, smiling and waving wow. at her family on there. So That's amazing. you're going to find out yourself one day when you go. I'm just saying yeah. he won't let any evil, fear, death, destruction, wickedness, evil. No witchcraft is in any movie mm. in heaven. So if there's movies been made about witchcraft, you're not going to see them shown in heaven. I, I feel like Star Wars is basically witchcraft, seems to me. But okay. Um, so I can just assure you, because parents are thinking, people always equate what I say about heaven to earth. It's not earth. Yeah. Heaven has no form of darkness, evil, wickedness, hate. Uh, there's no uh, graphic violence of anything. There's no fear or terror. That's not there. It's not going to be there. But but God is a storyteller himself. Yeah. His, his son loved to give parables. It's another word for stories. Jesus told parables on the earth, but even the father uh, would tell stories and sometimes he tells stories he made up himself to share with us. So I guess, is she saying that Jesus is a movie producer? I feel like that's what she's trying to tell us. Jesus is a movie producer because he loved telling stories because he told parables. Okay. He's a storyteller. He loves the arts. Holy Spirit especially loves the arts. And um, so I can just assure you, your family members... Are like, again, she's saying the Holy Spirit loves the arts. She has no way of knowing anything about the Holy Spirit. She claims to have secret divine information that was given to her by God himself. Does it get more absurd than this, honestly? And, and I got to tell you the truth. This seems blasphemous. Like, deeply blasphemous. Again, I don't care. I'm not, like, I'm not a Christian. I don't believe this garbage anyways. But is this not, like, the epitome of blasphemy? Aren't bored in any way whatsoever. It doesn't sound boring. Living you know. in light. Light comes from your spirit man. So even people have light coming from them that, who moved to heaven. You still recognize them and know them, though. And so you just think, if you belong to Jesus Christ, you can be with your family forever. And even those who recently passed, I want to encourage you to say they moved. You don't you don't need to say you lost them because they're not okay. lost. They're not missing somewhere. <laughs> Their body may be somewhere. Maybe you had it cremated. It's okay. God said he can put the ashes back together on the day the dead and Christ shall rise. A lot of people try to equate in their own head or try to assume things. But they're living a life they never could live in heaven. In heaven, okay. you exist to live. And your family member has joy, celebration. They love you more now than they did before. Even if you argued, you won't argue in heaven. People will love one another. And um, they can't wait to see you again one day. But they know you need to live your life. See, this is the manipulative part right here. This is where it, it gets honestly kind of disgusting. Where she's very clearly using people's fears and like fears of death and interest in seeing family members again she's using that against these people and it's uh, it's honestly disgusting it's enough to convince people to listen to her because she she has some special insight right if she has this special insight like she claims if she really does talk to god like she claims then everything she says must be true. And I must see my family again. I must be able to, right? It must be possible. She's preying on these people's emotional vulnerability, which is a hallmark of a cult, by the by. I mean, I'm not making any specific claims about her or whatever. She is 
in a, a, a cult-like religion, but this is cult-like behavior. And here's why I say that. Ultimately, a cult is nothing more than an abusive relationship between the adherent and the leader of, the, of a group, right? So you'll find a lot of similar behavior among different adherents to groups. I'm sorry, you'll find a lot of similar behavior between cults and, you know, abusive relationships. For example, you know, maybe you were in an abusive relationship and the guy wanted to isolate you from your friends and family. Maybe he wanted to exploit you financially. Maybe he tried to control your behavior or prevent you from reaching out to other. I mean, cults fundamentally are abusive relationships. They, they work the same. It's all the same stuff. So it doesn't have to be a cult to be a bad thing. It can simply be an exploitative or abusive situation. Now, in Kat Kerr's case, she is the leader of a, of a personality cult, for lack of a better term. And, and the cult that she's a part of centers around evangelicalism heavily. There seems to be this weird non-denominational evangelical cult that, that's formed in recent years. And that's what she seems to be a part of. It's like they have a whole bunch of beliefs about stuff and they have some scripture to back it up a little bit, kind of. And the stuff that they don't have scripture to back it up with, they just say, yeah, well, God prophesied it to me. He gave me the secret message. So they use kind of shaky logic. Same with Jehovah's Witnesses. They do exactly the same thing. They use shaky logic, you know, find kind of scriptures that back it up a little bit what they believe about their Bible math or whatever else. And then they, they make that extra little jump that, that is completely unjustified. They make that extra little jump by saying, well, God prophesied it to me. God told me this secretly. So here we have Kat Kerr telling us God secretly told her that Star Wars is, you know, he it was given to George Lucas by him and that they watch Star Wars in their, you know, in heaven and people act in it and all of this other garbage, all of this other absurdity. You need to go forward with what God has for you and be what he called you to be on this earth. That's why he sent you. Oh, that was the end, I guess. Yeah, it looks like that was the end. Absolutely absurd, dude. Honestly. Absurd on every level. How do people fall for this stuff? I know that, you know, it's easy to call people fools or ridiculous or idiots or whatever, but I'm really careful about doing that because, truthfully, I was in this type of religion at one point not this specific one but i was in a, a an extremist religion it was completely unjustified to believe and i wasn't a fool i wasn't an idiot it's not really fools or idiots that that necessarily fall for this stuff a lot of the time people are born into it or they're pr already primed to believe it they lose a family member or something and they feel like they need to find some way to reconnect with that family member. And that way of reconnecting is being given to them by Kat Kerr. You know, Kat Kerr says, you will see your family member again. I've spoken to them. And they said that they're fine and all this other stuff. And then she goes into absolute absurdity about, you know, Star Wars being given to George Lucas by God and, and all this other garbage. Like, some of the stuff that she says is truly, truly absurd. But people are already bought in by this point. They already want, they're already primed to accept anything she says about it. Anyway, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Honestly sad that people don't see straight through it. I get it. Doesn't make it any less sad.